What's up everybody? It's your boy Mood616 here and I am finally back with a DVD slash Blu-ray update for y'all. And yeah man, I think this is everything I picked up in the last couple months. Uh, August, September, maybe a little bit of July. Uh, it's, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty action-packed I guess. It's not like the biggest update in the world, but it's pretty big. <laughs> um... So yeah, I hope y'all are doing good out there, man. It is, uh, you know, October 8th right now as I'm filming this. So in the kind of in the middle of 31 days of horror. It's been a busy-ass month. But today is a, a holiday in Canada, Thanksgiving Monday. So I got a little bit of time here. The wife and kid just booked out. So I'm going to try and get some of this filmed. And uh, yeah, let's dip right into the DVDs here, man. So yeah, got a little bit of coffee here. All right. Starting off here, uh, one from Artsploitation called Tasteophobia. Now, I was really excited for this. Artsploitation has always been a really consistent company for me. They put out a lot of really good stuff. I like what they do. They release films from around the world. This one right here is from Italy. And it's an, uh, it's an anthology film from Italy. So I was like, man, how can you go wrong with this? Italy... Uh, Italian horror is like my favorite, you know, this is modern, so it's not gonna be like the same as the old school stuff, but, uh, I like the premise of this, you know, 14 shorts from 14 different directors, all based on phobias. Um, how can you go wrong? Well, they did. <laughs> they really did go wrong with this. This was terrible. I think maybe I liked one or two of the shorts in this. This is really bad. A lot of the shorts were just sh not good at all. Like, I mean, that's the best way to describe it. In a nutshell, they just weren't great. You know, the the idea is better than than the shorts themselves, which is unfortunate. But I don't recommend Tasteophobia. Didn't really care for that one. A uh, couple of cheap ass Walmart pickups. Um, had to pick up Lake Fear three because I have the first two, and maybe this one will make me watch the first two. Yeah. So there's three of these movies now, but I couldn't go. You know, super cheap. Couldn't pass it up. This one right here. I grabbed because, uh, it's called Strange Nature, I grabbed because the back actually convinced me to grab it. It's a, based on a true ecological mystery. I was like, okay, I gotta check this out. Snops has sounded pretty damn cool. Um, it said deformed frogs, and I was like, okay, sold, right there. Even though, on the cover, that kind of looks like a werewolf type deal, but it is what it is. Now, <laughs> I had to grab this because you know this is coming. Every time there's a big movie out in the cinema, there's a hundred fake ones that come out after, you know, the rip-offs. The Bad Nun, yes. I wasn't even the biggest fan of The Nun. I didn't mind it. I thought the atmosphere was a lot better than the story itself, but you guys heard the, the review on the podcast. But anyways, um, yeah, this looks terrible, but I, I just wanted to give it a shot, man. I, I really like non-exploitation type films and shit, so for the general, for the most part, The Nun wasn't bad. Don't get me wrong. Evil Bong 3. Uh, I picked up another, I do own this, but I have the special edition 3D version, which it doesn't have the 2D version, and I didn't really get a lot of enjoyment watching out of 3D, because it's the red and blue glasses, and I'm just not a big fan of that. So, I went ahead and grabbed a 2D copy of this, because it's Evil Bong 3. Yeah. Um, it's fun. It's a fun movie. Uh, it was $1.50, so I was like, whatever, gotta grab it. I uh, picked up Evil Bong 4, again, really, really cheap for this. Evil Bong 420, fuck yeah. Haven't watched part, part, past part 3, so looking forward to checking these ones out. I can't believe how many of these movies there is. Evil Bong High 5, they have the greatest titles. <laughs> like, the greatest titles for these movies, man. Ah, uh, yeah, Evil Bong High 5, of course had to grab that. And, of course, had to grab Evil Bong cleverly titled 666, right? How many, how many movies have that? Um, yeah, Evil Bong 666, fuck yeah. Uh, moving along with DVDs from Unearthed Films, we got Nails. Now, I did a review for this on my 31 Days of Horror, which you've probably seen, or may have not watched, but this was day one. Uh, Nails, this is a Russian film, very art house type style film. Uh, pretty cool stuff, give it a shot, man. It's definitely not what I was anticipating it to be with a title like Nails, I was expecting it to be... Not very art house, more gory shit like that. It, it, you know, it has its moments, but it's definitely a lot different than it was uh, than I was led to believe. Uh, Derek actually threw that one to me 
didn't have boxing for it. Actually, there's another one that was in that package. Aftermath Genesis. Um, yeah, we all know about this one. It's insane, batshit insane. And the last three DVDs I picked up. Uh, a film called Don't You Recognize Me. Now, if you know anything about me and my channel, I love movies that start with don't. I'm just obsessed with anything that has don't in the title. So I grab them all. Uh, this one I actually just found recently. I'd never even heard of this one. The synopsis sounded really damn cool, and to my amazement, I guess it is a horror film. So, I don't know. I'm really, I'm really curious on checking that one out. If you have seen this one before, let me know. I'll get to that eventually. Um, don't Let the Devil In. I checked this one out uh, a little while ago. Probably about a month ago or something. Uh, it actually wasn't that bad. It's really low budget. I think the story was a little bit convoluted at times. It was very atmospheric and shot pretty cool. It had some really good, uh, like really cool ideas in it. Um, it came up a little bit short, but it was still not bad though. I actually didn't mind it. And last up here for the DVDs, I believe this is a. Is this German? Uh, it's a German release, I believe. So, um, don't wake the dead. It's an Andre Shaw's film. Yeah. So, German film. I forgot that he directed this movie. But yeah, I've actually been after this one for a long time, and I found this for a really good price. Usually it was going for a little bit of money, like, you know, more than $10, $15. I didn't want to pay that shit, but I found this one for like $4, so I was like, fuck yeah. Good shit. So, that is the DVDs. Not too many. I don't really grab a whole lot of DVDs anymore because they're fucking DVDs, right? Yeah. So, okay. Let's get into these Blu-rays. Yeah. Oh yeah, before we get into these Blu-rays here, I forgot about this, and I gotta show this off because this is the very first one I've ever got. It, in fact, this is the very first one I've actually ever physically held. I've seen people show these on videos, and I knew about this format, but where I live, I don't think anyone else did <laughs> because it's uh, pretty obscure and rare to find around here. Um, I have a buddy that owns a, a shop. He sells, you know, a whole pile of stuff, and he found a guy that had a whole box of these, so he, he of course bought them up because you just don't see them very often. And he gave me this one for free, because he's like, you need to have this. But it's a CED of Friday the 13th Part 3. These things are so damn cool, it's like a huge 8-track, essentially. It's a format that definitely came and went very fast back in the 80s. Um, yeah, it's just very obscure and hard to find in my parts. So, this is very cool and it's in really good shape too. Uh, he had like he had a bunch of other horror ones. I might even grab a couple of them off him because um, these are pretty cool display pieces. I mean, there's just no way I could ever find a CD player to actually play those. I've never seen one personally. So, but that's pretty damn cool, man. I'm gonna put it somewhere up in this room. So, yeah, pretty cool. Happy to have that. But yeah, let's get into these Blu-rays here. First up, we'll start with the catalog titles, and then we'll move into the niche companies. And you know how I do it. You know how I do it. But. Uh, first up here is I Am A Hero. Uh, this is a film that got released, I believe, in Japan two or three years ago. Finally made its way to Region 1 and got a Region 1 release. So I'm, con I'm, I'm counting this as a 2018 because i just seen it and it just got released. This is fantastic. This is a really good zombie film. Um, you know, it's not like Train to Busan. I mean, it's in, it's in those lines kind of thing. But this is it's got a really cool story. I, I like the comedy in this. I like the setting. It's it's just fantastic stuff, man. I highly, highly recommend this. Had a blast with this. Um, give it my highest recommendation. So if you like these type of movies, give it a shot. Especially if you like Train to Busan. You probably dig this one. It is long, 127 minutes, but dope stuff right there. Oh yeah. Been hearing lots of bad things about this one, but I had to grab it because you just you gotta have it, right? Yeah. Tales from the Hood too. Um I still can't believe that the same creators slash directors did this movie. I still have yet to watch it, like I said, but, you know, I wasn't expecting this thing to be anywhere close to as good as the first one. Uh, Keith David, of course, plays, uh, you know, the guy that does the wraparound. Um, Clarence Williams III, of course, was the original star for that, and he did a fantastic job. I heard that he does okay, but the stories just aren't that great. But Tales from the Hood 2, had to pick it up. Super cheap. Now, my boy Matt did a review for this movie, Bloodfest, and it sounded pretty cool, man. I had to check it out, another cheap Walmart pickup, but I was like, fuck it, might as well grab it, it looks pretty cool, you know, yeah. I don't really buy, like, the most of modern films anymore, it seems like, but 
picked up the Predator 3 pack on Blu ray. Now, <laughs> I'm not really too sure why I picked it. Well, I, I know why I picked this up. It was $15 for the set. I have all three of these movies on Blu ray already, but I was kind of hoping that the original Predator was going to be a different transfer than that really fucking DNR'd glossy piece of shit that, you know, a 2D, 3D one that they put out. Um, I think someone did tell me it's the same transfer on here. I'd ordered this and I actually got it too late. It didn't ship for like two or three days from Amazon. So I had to start watching the Predator film. So I never got to check out this transfer. But if you can let me know down below if it is. I mean, I guess I could just pop it in. But but yeah, the Predator set. Whatever. If it is the same transfer, I'll probably just end up giving that set to somebody. Uh, moving along here. Jeepers Creepers 3 had to grab it. This, I don't know, man. It was like $7.00. It finally dropped on Amazon at like seven bucks. So like, fuck it, gotta grab it. I've heard bad things about it, but it is a Jeepers Creepers film. Gotta check it out. So, but yeah, Jeepers Creepers three. Uh, we got uh, the new Chainsaw film Leatherface. Finally got around to getting a copy of this. I'm one of the you know the people that really enjoy the shit out of this film. I think a lot of people had a problem with who Leatherface turned out to be in this film. It seems to be the consensus with this one. It kind of confused people. I thought it was really fucking stupid. Uh, but it was good, man. I thought it was really well done. It was very atmospheric. I liked the development of this movie. Um, of course, this one is directed by uh, the couple that did Inside and stuff. Yeah, so, and Livid or Levide. But it has that touch, you know, it has that feel to it a little bit. But I thought this was good. I thought this was good. The only problem is, is that this one, you know, it's like a prequel to the Chainsaw film, which is fine. But they also leave it so wide open that you could probably make two films after this one that tie into the original Chainsaw film. At least. You know, that's the way I feel. Just story-wise. But yeah. Another don't film. Don't grow up. Don't know anything about this one. I believe this is a Shudder exclusive. Yeah, it even says Shudder on the side. Yeah, there you go. But it's a don't film, so I had to grab it. Have not heard anyone talk about this one, so I have no idea. Um, how I... How you pronounce this one? Gojium Haunted Asylum. This is a found footage Korean film. I believe it's Korean. Yeah, I think it's Korean. Um, it's actually not that bad. Uh, last time I was talking about this film, Jeremy was reviewing it on the, on the podcast. I'd only watched an hour of it. I have finished it since then. And it's not bad. It's it's a little bit... It's It's got its creepy moments. I think the comedy is just a little bit what threw me off in this one. Um, but the setting was pretty damn cool. There was some good elements to this, but, you know, overall, it's it's worth a watch. It's pretty cool. Uh, this is another one that Derek sent me over, The Nightmare. This is a German media book. Pretty cool stuff. If you didn't see that unboxing, this is uh, just, like, a fantastic release. Very, very cool stuff. So, um, one of my favorite films from last year. Check out The Nightmare if you want something different anyways. Pretty cool shit. A couple of Takashi Miike films, Blade of the Immortal, finally got around to picking this up. I've heard nothing but great things. Haven't had a chance to check it out. I just got it in the mail. And it's 141 minutes like all Takashi Miike films, so you got to find the time to watch the Miike. Um, and on that note, actually, we just did a, a podcast um, reviewing some of his films, so if you haven't heard that, check it out. Some Takashi Miikes. We didn't pick the films. It was a Patreon. Everyone was like, oh, you know, everyone's reviewed those films. I'm like, yeah, but we didn't pick the films, so yeah. Blade of the Immortal, good shit. And then also picked up uh, Hari Kuri, uh, Takashi Miike's version of this. I believe the original movie was released by Criterion, I want to say, put this out. But yeah, just like 13 Assassins, he's did an updated version of it. I've heard good things about this one also. And this really doesn't fit, but it does have the elements of horror. It really does. This movie actually kind of scared the shit out of me when I was a little kid. I remember watching this when I was super young. Uh, when it, I think it came out in 84. I've actually seen this in the theater since. Uh, a couple years ago, I took my kid to see it. And that, of course, is a never-ending story. But there is some dark moments in this film. Like, when you really watch when you watch it, it's 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 got some dark moments. I, it's one of my all-time favorite movies. I love this. But just an upgrade. I had the DVD. Uh, the Blu-ray was, like, $3.99. Whatever. Can't pass it up for $3.99. Fuck yeah. So... Never ending story. I actually can't wait to check that out again. Oh. Coffee. Alright, move along. Let's get into, I don't know, I guess this stack right here. From Severin. It's probably like the most Severin uh, titles I've picked up in a long time for one update. 
Uh, we got Threads, the famous and infamous TV film from the UK about uh, atomic war, basically. Man, this is fucking depressing and brutal. It's very realistic, I think, to what it is. Um, it, the build-up before they get bombed in this is just horrific, and then when it actually happens, it's just, it's brutal. Like, everybody needs to check out Threads. It's a fantastic film. Look at that. What a perfect lenticular color cover for this movie. Seven did a great job with this. Looks fantastic, but Threads, highest recommendation. I give this a perfect 10 out of 10. This is an amazing, one of the best TV films of all time. Awesome. Awesome release from Severin. Um, Bruno Matai's Shocking Dark. <laughs> uh, I was super stoked to check this one out. Of course, it says directed by Vincent Don, one of his aliases. This movie, you know, it's it's very much a alien slash Terminator ripoff, which I'm cool with because that's what Bruno Matai does. He just rips off films constantly. Sometimes he takes scores right out of films and puts them into his own. Stock footage. Uh, I mean, this has scenes from aliens. It's ridiculous. Um... But it's really boring. <laughs> this is a fucking boring film. I won't lie. I was bored to death watching this, man. It was. It's one of my least... I've seen a lot of Bruno Matai films, and most of them are super entertaining to the point where you just... They have, some, they have rewatchability. This one's pretty boring. I will revisit that someday, but... Uh, then we got, of course, Zombie 4 by Claudio Fergrasso. Uh, what was the name? Clyde Anderson uses this one. Um, yeah, Zombie 4. Fantastic film. Another great release from... Uh, Severin. I've always been a big fan of Zombie 4. I think it's great. Transfer's beautiful on this. Really, really beautiful stuff. Uh, picked up, finally got Screwballs. I thought these things were out of print. And I came across these for dirt cheap, so I was like, I'm gonna grab them because I thought they were out of print. But I think they may have gotten re-released. I don't know. Maybe they were never out of print to start with. I don't know. But I love Screwballs. I haven't checked it out in a long time. It's, it's fucking sex comedies from the 80s, man. And one of my most favorite cover arts from the 80s. Uh, sex comedy wise, I, that's a brilliant cover. And of course, grab the sequel, Loose Screw Screwballs 2, which another fantastic, um, yeah, cover. Uh, it's got two versions of the film, which is awesome on here, so Screwballs 2. Next up here from Masker Video, which is Enter the Devil. This is a fantastic release. The slip box. I fucking heard the slip boxes are selling for like stupid money. I got a little bit tattered in the corner there, but. Uh, and another great release from Asker, man. These guys really do put a lot of effort into the releases. And I thank them for releasing this because I'd never even heard of this movie before. And to my amazement, it was pretty damn cool. I enjoyed the shit out of it because it's got a great setting, it's got a cool ending. Good ride, man. Enter the Devil. Check it out. Uh, from Vestro, we got Class 99. My boy Jeremy sent me this one over because he found a really good price for it. And these Vestrons in Canada are like $50. So, I, I'm not really a big fan of this line, to be honest, because the price is not right. And the movies that they're releasing, I'm not overly that intrigued by. But the collector in me is like, I need to get them all, of course. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, they're just too fucking expensive. So I'm not in any hurry. I think I'm kind of done with this line, to be honest. But Class 99... Uh, still a fantastic, fun film. I don't know why this movie gets as much hate as it does. I think it's fun as hell. It's good stuff, man. The ending's awesome. It's got a really good ending. Uh, Eureka's release of The Old Dark House, uh, directed by James Well. This is such an amazing movie. I absolutely love this movie. Probably, oh, it's it's got to be right up there with my favorite movies from the 30s. I mean, and there was a lot of good movies in the 30s. You know, of course, you got dragged to them, Frankenstein and... You know, the Universal Monster movies among films, but this was a great film uh, from 1932. Just awesome. Great, great release. Slip cover. Got the original cover right there. If you've never seen the old Dark House, check out this version of it. Awesome. Eureka is such a good company. Uh, Artsploitation's German Angst anthology film. Uh, three shorts directed by Jörg Bergerite. Uh, Mikael blah, 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 and Andre blah, whatever. <laughs> Not gonna try and do, um, pronounce the names, but you know this was okay. I mean, it was better than Taste of Phobia. I mean, there's only three in this one. It does run pretty long. 112 minutes for three shorts is yeah, pretty long. Uh, I think the third one in this was actually pretty cool. About the sex club and shit. 
It's been a while since I've watched it, but it was okay. I liked it better than the other one, but it's worth a watch. Ah, uh, The Psychopath from Kino Classics. This is awesome, man. I really enjoyed the shit out of this movie. Never seen it before. 1966 Psychopath. Good, great performances in this. Really cool story, man. Yeah, I enjoyed it. You know, it's got creepy-ass dolls. It's shit to do with dolls and stuff. Pretty cool. Psychopath. Give that one a shot. Now, this one... I fucking was so ecstatic when Scorpion announced that they were releasing this. This is totally awesome, but I still haven't watched it, of course. I think I might review this during the 31 days. Uh, but yeah, Giallo in Venice. Finally, on Blu-ray. Um, just one of those obscure Giallos that I just didn't think was going to get released, but, you know, the fine folks over at Coke. Red and Scorpion. Yeah, so this is what we get. We get an awesome Blu-ray release of Giallo in Venice. Heard it's just, you know, sleazy shit, um, which doesn't really surprise me because that's why we watch Giallos, right? For the sleaziness. I don't know. Uh, Lenore. This, again, another great release from, from Scorpion, man. So it's like a period piece, I believe. Still haven't checked it out, but I've heard good things about it. So another great one from Scorpion. Uh, getting to the Code Reds, Julie Darling, this is a cool film, it's not really a horror film, it's more of like a drama type thriller, but it's it's pretty demented, to be honest, um, Julie Darling, she loves her daddy, man, she loves her daddy, she's, wants to be with her daddy, yeah, very, there's overwhelming elements of incest, <laughs> let's just put it this way, it's got Sybil Danny in it, pretty cool, I, I enjoyed the shit out of this movie, man. I'm glad I never picked up the DVD of that. I, I had the DVD so many times I was going to buy from Code Red. And then the Blu-ray came out, what, two years ago or something? Finally picked it up. Monster Shark. Uh, great Lamberto Bava film. Yeah, hybrid shark type deal. Cool shit, man. Monster Shark. Does have the alternate cover. If you're wondering, I'm sure you've seen it though. Devilfish. Which is actually the cover that I knew the film under. But... Monster Shark, but Lamberto Bava, good shit. Desecration, man. Now, this is so awesome that this got re-released by Code Red. Uh, Dante Tomaselli's first film. This is a fucking trip, man. This is a great movie. This is by far his best movie. Um, I don't know what Dante Tomaselli's doing these days, but he hasn't done a film in a long time. But this is by far his best movie. Desecration, give it a shot. It's got great, great nightmare imagery to it. It's shot really cool. The soundtrack's cool. Um, it's just, yeah, full-length sur surrealistic nightmare voyage. That's a great way of putting it, really. Pay some watch to the likes of Argento. Yeah. Check it out. Fantastic film. Uh, Love Me Deadly. This one was okay. It's not a bad movie. Um, Daddy is a naked corpse on a slab. That pretty much says it all. Necrophilia. Deals with necrophilia, of course. Yeah, good stuff. So incest, necrophilia, what else we got here? Oh, we got some necromancy. Um, this was cool, man. I think picked this up from the Dark Force Entertainment site. Yeah, they all of a sudden had copies because this was really hard to get your hands on and all of a sudden I found a couple copies on there. Spread the word, they sold out in like two seconds. Um, yeah, dude, this one's got Orson Welles in it. Uh, early 70s, 1972, necromancy type film. I, I thought it was pretty cool. It wasn't as great as I was expecting, but it was good. Uh, picked up the Volume 1 and Volume 2, Fred Williamson Signature Collection Series, Mean Johnny Burrows, and of course, Death Journey. Yeah, I think there is a third one too, which I love these black exploitation films. I'm such a big fan. Um, but yeah, got to check those ones out still. And last up for the Code Reds, we picked up this I don't I know absolutely nothing about, but this was really cheap, and it was like $8 for the Blu-ray on the website. They're having a sale, and so I was like, fuck it. I had no intentions of actually picking this one up, because I don't think it's like a horror film. It does sound pretty cool. It's called This is a Hijack. Yeah, could be good. Could be good. Yeah, so I'm going to do that right there. Yeah. All right, last stack of Blu-rays before we get into the box sets, and we'll just we'll end it there. Uh, all right, so the Witching Season uh, released by Scream Team releasing. This is a anthology type style film. It's actually not really. It's just it's more or less five shorts. 
Um, it was basically, they're kind of like TV episodes. I did a review for this on day two of the 31 Days of Horror. Check out that full length review. This is awesome. I love the shit out of this. It has one of the greatest Halloween atmospheres to all the episodes. Really good stuff. Really, really good stuff. Check that out. It actually did come with a poster, 11 by 17 poster, with the artwork that you see on there. So this will be going up somewhere in here once I get a frame for it, but that was cool. And yeah, it does have reversible cover art, which I think I did show in the video also. But yeah, right there. But I highly recommend this, man. If you like anthology type style films, you know, it's episodic though. Um, episodic? Episodic? Yeah. Uh, Halloween, man. That's really good shit. Really good shit. Can't recommend that enough. Uh, next up here from, of course, this is the Olive Slasher line. Slasher video line. Streets of Vengeance, man. This was fantastic, man. I really enjoyed the shit out of this. Revenge film, of course. Exploitation type deal. Good shit, though, man. Check out Streets of Vengeance. I thought it was awesome. Thought it was awesome. Gets my recommendation. Criterion. The Virgin Spring. Finally got the Amar Bergman film. Um, we all know that, you know, Last House on the Left was, you know, got the, insp the inspiration from, or for that film was from this movie right here. Rape Revenge type murder. This is an amazing film. I uh, can't wait to check out this Blu-ray. Just got this in a little bit ago. Um, I generally don't buy Criterions a lot because they're so expensive, but this may have been priced wrong. I don't know. Maybe just drop down to a reasonable price. I don't know. Sometimes Amazon does that, but I was happy, no, nonetheless, to you know pick up this Virgin Spring. Such a great movie. 88 Films release of Eyeball. This is the special edition with the awesome slipcover. This is like a brick too, man. Super, super heavy shit. Awesome slipcover. Eyeball. Um, yeah, it's got the, you know, the cards in it, the booklet, all that type of shit. So, um, there is a standard edition, which you just don't get the slip in the, in the booklet and shit like that, I think, in the art cards, I think, but yeah. Um, this is a great Umberto Lenzi film. I've seen it before. I haven't watched this Blu-ray yet. I do have the German DVD of this, which, you know, looks like a German DVD. <laughs> this thing is very, very hard to get in. It's so tight. Yeah, that's what she said. Um, eyeball. Great stuff. Uh, next up here. And that, what, what number actually is Eyeball? Because that's one thing about these slip covers is that you can't see the numbers in number 45 in the line. This one right here, number 42, and um, Amazonia, Amazonia. The Catherine Miles story. I've actually never seen this movie, so I'm looking forward to checking this one out. It's Cannibal Film, a later edition of Cannibal Film. I believe this one came out in the mid-80s. Uh, yeah, 85. So, still need to check that bitch out. A couple from the Shaw Brothers lines. I believe this is number, I don't know, number 16. The Dragon Missile. Right there. Still need to check it out. And the Ghost Lovers, which is number 18. I fucking love this Shaw Brothers line. It's fantastic. Man, it's such a great line. And that's it for the 88 films. Uh, moving along into a couple Scream Factory releases. Picked up Brain Scan. Still have yet to check out the transfer on this. It's probably good. But uh, Brain Scan is a fun 90s film, man. Um, it's kind of dated now, really, with the technology and things, but it's still fun. Nevertheless, man. Um, got Edward Furlong in here. It's a. It is what it is, man. That dude right there always gets embedded in my mind every time I watch this. The look of him is just so creepy. Return of Living Dead Part 2. Finally on Blu-ray. Such a fun-ass movie. I love this movie, man. I never used to care for this when I was younger. Because I liked Return of Living Dead and this was just almost too goofy for me. Especially like the whole Michael Jackson dance sequence. and I don't know. But I've grown to love this movie. It does have the original score put back into it, which is really cool. And I gotta say, man, I really do like the, the custom artwork that they did for this. Pretty cool. There we go with that. That's awesome. Yeah, Return of the Living Dead 2 on Blu-ray finally. Fully done. The original soundtrack. Straight Jacket uh, with Joan Crawford. This is it's an awesome film, man. Joan Crawford knocks her performance out the park in this film, man. So good. She's just so convincingly good in this movie. Uh, 1964. Man, she's awesome. She's totally great film. Great film. 
that's it for the Scream Factory for the time being. Uh, and last up for the Blu-rays, we've got the Vinegar Syndromes. So right up here, <laughs> we got a release of House of the Dead, also known as Alien Zone. What the hell kind of title is Alien Zone? I mean, I guess that kind of makes a little bit of sense. Um, but yeah, no, this is a anthology type film. This one almost feels like this could have been the inspiration for Tales from the Hood. It's set in like a, in a morgue type thing or a, a funeral house, funeral home, whatever. And it's about this guy that gets lost. He ends up in there and yeah, the, the dude that works in there starts telling these fucking morbid stories and shit. This was actually really good. I enjoyed this, man. This is a good, a decent anthology. Pretty cool. But right away, it just reminded me of Tales from the Hood. It was kind of interesting. And then we got Dear Dead Delia. Uh, Dear Dead Delia. Yeah, it's, um... <laughs> it's an okay film, I guess. I mean, it's typical... It's very typical Vinegar Syndrome type release. Uh, I believe... Troll might release this one before, I think. I think they did. I can't remember. It's 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 okay. Um Yeah, next up here is <laughs> one that Troma had released before, and this movie has so many fucking names. The Dead Come Home, the House on Tombstone Hill, and it's also known as Dead Dudes in the House. That's the title that I knew this film under. It was released by Troma. Uh it's absolutely blows my mind. How Vinegar Syndrome does transfers this good. Because this movie looked like shit before. The DVD's full screen looks like hell. It, this is just beautiful. It's such a goofy, fun film, though, man. About this dude that buys this house. And, of course, there's somebody in there that starts picking them off one by one and shit. And when you die, you come back and you turn into a maniac yourselves and shit. So everyone's kind of against each other. Fun film, though. I enjoyed it. Rewatching it. It was good. Uh, Body Melt, Vinegar Syndrome Blu-ray, man. Jesus Christ, again, this Blu-ray just looks phenomenal. I mean, I could probably say that about every one of these releases. They do the best transfers, in my opinion. Uh, Body Melt, great exploitation from 93, I think this movie came out in. I do have the Scorpion DVD, but man, this Blu-ray is... I had to upgrade. I love this movie. It's so odd. It's such a strange movie. It really is. I've always loved the construction of this movie, like, it's the way they did it. It's got awesome effects, but uh, body melt, awesome shit. And these last three I have not checked out yet, but we got Wonder Woman. <clears throat> we got Wonder Woman. Um, this sounds like a pretty cool, maybe like black exploitation action, early 70s type stuff. Gotta check that out. This one sounds really interesting. Shot. It was like a 1973. Uh, this was a. A film shot, I believe, in school. Yeah, in the college town, Illinois. So it was like a, it was like a, a film school type film. Uh, it looks awesome. It's like an action film and shit. Pretty cool shit. Very interesting release from Vinegar Syndrome. And last up here, we got Memories Within Miss Aggie. Now I believe this is a hardcore picture uh, thriller. It's like a porno thriller. Not really too sure I can show that right there, but whatever. It's a painting. Fuck it. Looks pretty damn cool, though, but it, it does sound like it's more on the triple X side. But, you know, it's how they used to do it in the 70s. They used to make porno movies, right? Good shit. So, memories within Miss Aggie. Awesome. So that's it for the uh, the Blu-rays and shit. Getting into the box sets and stuff here. Uh, first up, we got picked up the Scream Factory release of... The Wreck franchise. And to my amazement, the box is actually not flimsy. It's nice and hard. I was shocked by that. I haven't watched any of these yet, but I'm curious to see how they look because I found footage films. We've got Wreck 1, of course, Wreck 2, Wreck 3, and Wreck 4, which I have never seen before. So, yeah, that's kind of cool. But yeah. Good solid box here. Screen Factory stepping up their game with their box sets. Not flimsy. That's good. Picked up the uh, complete British TV show of Thriller. This is not the one that Boris Karloff hosted. 
Um, this is, yeah, it's like a TV series. Eight discs. Uh, oh, it come housed like that. Pretty cool. It's actually not a bad set. It's like a brick. Seen, I've seen the show before, but I couldn't pass it up. This was like $10 for the entire thing. I was like, okay, that's insanely cheap. For 43 murder mystery movies, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that for 10 bucks. It's like five TV shows named Thriller. Ridiculous. Uh, picked up from Indicator, we got the Hammer Volume 3 Blood and Terror box set. Had to grab this because these Indicator sets that they're putting out for these Hammer films are just phenomenal. Uh, the Terror of the Tongues, the Tongs, I guess. Tongues. Right there. Uh, the Stranglers of Bombay. I have yet to check out any of these yet. Just haven't gotten around to them. Uh, yesterday's Enemy. This one looks pretty weird, actually. It doesn't even look like a horror film at all. Very interesting. I'd never heard of this one. And The Camp on Blood Island, which I've known about. These are awesome. The Brutal Truth Behind the Japanese War Crimes. So they're doing a really cool job with these releases because, yeah, we're getting so many Hammer films. Great releases of Hammer films. It's awesome. But another beautiful box set. Love the cover art. Yeah. They do such great work. Yeah. They're not cheap, but they're worth it. Um, yeah. Picked up this here. This, I believe this is Mill Creek. Yeah. Now, this thing, I know there's a horror one, too, that was released. I solely picked this up. For one movie. <laughs> uh, Nine Deaths of the Ninja. So this Driving Cult Cinema collection. It's pretty cool though, man. It's like a really hard box and everything. It's a nice presentation. It's got a nice little 3D cover there and shit. 200 movies. Now this thing usually used to sell for like 60 to $80. I got it for like 20 bucks. So, and it was brand new. I couldn't pass it up. But I was like, you know, it's cheaper than buying the out-of-print DVD for Revenge of the Ninja. Might as well just get this. You know, of course, it is typical Mill Creek where all the discs are housed and those things. We all know that. But, you know, a lot of these movies I already own on Blu-ray and shit. But it does have a mix. It's obviously all cult films. It does have some horror films on here, too. I see the hearse is on here. Uh, when did Bloodlust is even on here from 59. But lots of really cool films. Lots of good shit. But a lot of these movies have great releases. But, uh, you know, Nine Deaths of the Ninja, Shoguchi. Had to pick it up. And I, to my amazement... The transfer on it was phenomenal. It was widescreen. It was like a DVD transfer of it. It was awesome. I was totally shocked by it. So, but yeah, pretty cool set though. I'm happy to have that. Uh, picked up this one right here. Now I got this box set because I wanted to get the Legend of Billie Jean on Blu-ray because I love that movie. And this set right here was pretty much, I think it was $1 cheaper than this to buy this separately. So this movie comes on a solo Blu-ray. And it was a dollar cheaper for this whole set, so I'm like, no brainer. Also comes with this movie, Little Nikita. I've never seen it. It's a River Phoenix movie. I've never seen that one before. And then we got a four pack collection here Private Resort, The Perfect, or just Perfect, uh, Hard Bodies, of course, Spring Break. I've seen three or four of those. I've never seen Perfect. Um, yeah, I don't know what the fuck. Jamie Lee Curtis, John Travolta. I've never seen that one. But yeah, four pack right here. But I mean, this was kind of a no brainer. I'm not going to just buy The Legend of Billie Jean for a dollar more when I can get this whole box set. Like, ridiculous. Pretty cool stuff, though. Another one for Milk, actually. Um, and I picked up a copy of Last House on the left. You know, another one. I do have the. I already have the, the UK release of this, but I picked up one for my homie Jeremy because they dropped down to $14 on Amazon.ca. So then I picked up another copy of Last House on the left. And then I picked up another copy of Last House on the left. And next up here I picked up another copy of Last House on the left. And what else we got here? Another copy of Last House on the left. <laughs> and finally here we picked up another copy of Last House on the left. <laughs> now if you're wondering why I have six copies of this beautiful box set because Jeremy had informed me that this thing had gone down to $14 so I picked him up a copy and then these things kept dropping in price I ended up picking up another copy for 10 and then I picked up like four more copies I picked up three copies for under $8 a piece and one of these was nine 
and then they wouldn't sell any more to me. <laughs> I am not a reseller, so I will not be reselling these. I don't care about the money. Um, I'm going to give them away. One of these is for Jeremy. I'm going to give the rest out probably on the show or to various people that need a copy and shit. But I mean, for $8 for this release, it's back up to $51 on Amazon.ca. So that was a no brainer. So whoever else took advantage of that, good on you for doing that. But uh, that's why I have six. Well, technically, I have seven copies of this because I have one for my own. I think I might keep one of the region one releases. But, but yeah. Last house on the left, Arrow version. And if you guys did not check out the unboxing for this, I will show this since it's sitting down here anyways. Uh, I did manage to pick up, for a pretty good price actually, the complete Puppet Master trunk set, which is fantastic quality, I said in the video. It's really, really good quality. Um, it does come with only one figure. I got Blade here. But it has all the movies from the original franchise, with the exception of Demonic Toys. Pub Master vs. Demonic Toys, because that's actually not considered part of the franchise, even though Charles Band produced that movie and shit. Um, but yeah, so, you know, if you want to hear my complete thoughts on all these movies, we recently did the entire franchise review, of course, on the podcast. We like to torture ourselves with reviews of shitty-ass movies, especially the fucking Axis trilogy. Man, Axis of Evil, Axis Rise, and Axis Termination are shit. <laughs> They're fucking terrible. Ugh, but yeah, so this is a fucking cool ass set, I gotta say. Very, very good quality, to my amazement, too. Considering it's full moon, I wasn't expecting this set to be as good as it is, but can't go wrong, so I'm just gonna shut that because I don't want the thing opening when I move it. But that is it for the haul, man. That's what I picked up in the last couple months. Um, yeah, I got tons of shit coming in the mail. Like, I've just got lists and lists of shit that's coming, so next update might. I don't know when I'll do, maybe a couple months, maybe in December, but it'll be decently big. It'll be another big, big update. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave your comments down below if you've seen anything. Um, yeah, let me know your thoughts on it. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, give it a thumbs down. Uh, but yeah, check you guys later. And as usual, deuces! Yeah!